I don't want to get it wrong. Leaving the ruck a little bit and getting into the edge stuff. I know I've bounced in, in and out of the two a little bit, so some of these things we would have covered. But uh, again, going to our one, two, three and our, our four players, those guys out on the edge, them not getting caught up and looking in at the ball all the time and just making sure that we're, we're looking up, we're positioned in front of an attacker and that we're getting adequate spacing around us, uh, that's really important. Uh, a lot of that feeds off, you know, and, and you know, quite often they're our lazier players at times or our players that, that tend to look for little bits of shortcuts too. Um, but their ability to, to, to reload at some speed and get themselves back on the defensive line so that they've got time to have a look what's in front of them, adjust their spacing and get themselves in a good position uh, is really important to, to good edge defenders. Uh, for, if you can get them into a habit of doing that, then they make their own jobs a hell of a lot easier when they are under pressure on a long shift. Um, but, but again, going back to not just looking in at the ball, looking up at what's in front of us and being in a, an effective position to make a tackle, our spacing being right and knowing what's coming at us too. Communication on the line and off the line. And uh, you know, that's sort of, our players are very good at standing on the line, particularly if they've got some time with a slower play the ball, looking up and talking. But then they get off the line the first couple of steps, they're stopping that talk. That talk's got to continue you know, as much as they can. And when they're off the line and a play's unfolding, the more they're nominating whether they've got a ball or calling a go call, or if they're changing, telling the bloke inside and out that I've got the jockey or I've got the tail, then uh, the more we've got that sort of talk off the line as well, then, then again, the more confident we're going to be, uh, not just while we're on the line, but, but while we're uh, trying to make the tackles up in the attacking line. I've mentioned make them play. Outside defenders start our talk, count our numbers, I've mentioned that. Uh, in, in, inverted defensive line, that's what we play. Our, uh, our guys on the inside dictating our line speed and getting our line sport, uh, forward, which means that every bloke outside them from the B out needs to be able to see the defender inside them. Okay, and the way we defend, if, if, if you don't do that, if you get in front of the guy inside you, you're going to cause problems. Uh, so it's imperative, again, that your inside defenders are, are getting forward and able to get forward really hard. And uh, particularly when I look at the, the double defending, if we're, if we're going to double defend, those guys on our outside need to be able to see what's going on. The further we can get our line forward, and, and when we get to the double defend, you'll see that the, the outside defenders do paddle a little bit and wait, and they have to, to make a decision. If they react too early, then, uh, you know, then they're, they're forcing the decision rather than, than letting it happen. Um, it, it, it's imperative that you're, you're not, you know, particularly when we're defending our, our actual defensive line, if our A's and B's don't get forward and we're standing there, well, we're going to get run over. We're going to get beaten for strength. So the further we can get our defensive line forward, then not only the easier our decisions, the less time they've got, but if we do not get a really clean tackle, it, it doesn't matter as much. We take away that threat of them being able to barge over us. Stick to rules where possible. Okay, and this is getting into our, our goal line defence. More important than any other place on the field that we're man on man on short sides. And if you're giving, uh, you know, I mentioned before our, our need you or our negative defence on a short side, if you're doing that on the line, you, you, you're going to get beat a lot of times. Yes, you're going to get caught doing that sometimes, but there needs to be more of an emphasis of trying to get even numbers uh, when you're on a short side. A couple of ways that makes that easier for you. you know, if you're inside your 10 or inside your 7, uh, you, you only want one marker. So that means you can pull another defender in to, to defend really tight to the ruck and take care of the, uh, um, the dummy half on that short side. Or you can use your fullback to slot into the short side if you're inside the, the tram lines, you know, the 20 in from the sidelines. A fullback can stand in there and cover your dummy half runner, which allows the defenders outside them if you've got three of them then uh, it allows them to basically be man on man uh, and not have as much space to have to defend on a, on a, on a short side if it is three on three. So they're, they're things that you can use. Obviously, if a fullback is going to stand in the defensive line, then it gives the opposition ways of, of, of exploiting that and finding him, you know, with little kicks in behind. Um, your halves on the opposite side become more important than if you're going to defend him in, in the defensive line because they've got to be able to sweep on an early kick. If you're going to put your, your fullback in the defensive line, later in tackle counts, he's got to have to be able to get back for a kick. He can't stand up there and a tackle five. One marker inside the seven, 
A lot of people would use 10 there, I like 7. Uh, I, I just think that uh, 10 metres, if it's played on the 10 metre line, is a long way. If it's a relative, you know, if you're not in complete control of the tackle, it's a long way to be trying to reload. And you can get caught with the guy still on the reload around that ruck area. And you know, when you're in that area around your line, you want as many numbers in your defensive line as you, as you can handle. For up the other end of the field, I'm not so worried about it. But in that, that, uh, on, on, in that last 10 metres, you need as many defenders in your line as you can possibly get. So I like seven metres. If you're in doubt, leave two. So if you're at seven or seven and a half or eight or, or whatever, if, you know, there's no, if there's any doubt, just keep two there. You're better off having two there than having a guy on the reload and, and him not being any use to you. Uh, eight defenders to look in first, and obviously they need to be a bit tighter, particularly if you're playing one marker. So the closer you get to the line, the closer you need your A's to be. Some teams will play that as, a, as a, uh, a fullback, but you need those guys to be really tight and looking in first, not just be all about getting to the ball as fast as they can. Again, though, if the dummy half passes, we want our A's getting to the ball as fast as they can on that inside. Um, four men using the far post as a guide for width. So uh, if, if the uh, opposition are playing it on our right-hand side somewhere and on the left-hand back rower, I don't want to be getting myself inside that, that far post. Uh, that's an indicator. Yes, it's going to happen sometimes. And I'd rather see our back rowers come in and close that space and try and encourage tight players to come out with them than, than stand out wide and, and leave a space on the inside calling them out. Um, I'd always encourage players to defend tighter rather than defend wide and leave space on our inside. Because if we get beaten through there, that's six points. If we get beaten out there, well, one, we've got a better chance of, of getting there. Um, they've got to be better players to get it to our outside. And uh, if they do, well, we hope that they, they have some chance of missing it. Oh, but in general, you want your four men no further into that second post. I mentioned your three men acting as a pendulum. So again, if they're on that other side of the field and on the left three men, I can drop into the in goal area if we're right on our line uh, and give myself a little bit of a head start if they do put a kick across. I've also got to be smart enough to be, know when to get back into that defensive line and, and join them. Um, smart enough and, and have the attitude that I want to do that as well. Fullback can help with standing at A, I've, I've uh, spoken about that. And if attack has numbers and not deep, there may be an opportunity to go forward hard and wedge. So if the defensive line's flat, it gives you a bit more opportunity to come up and in at them. If they're standing deep with flat runners and out the back runners, you, you might find it hard to, to come up and in. And if you do, even though you might get on the fullback, uh, particularly if it's a centre or a, or a halfback who gets the fullback out the back, uh, they've got a long way to reload and to give the attack a real opportunity to play, you know, to keep going and play back at a short side with them. Uh, you know, last year, Melbourne 20s on their line played, um, generally played a, uh, a, a really aggressive up and in sort of defence with their centres trying to get on the fullback. Uh, we had a plan going into that game that we were going to hit our, our front men, hit our, our back rowers, try and get a fast play of the ball and go straight back at them. Uh, they stuffed us a bit, they didn't do that that game, but that was our plan to, to try and counter that anyway. And just a little bit on improvement. I mentioned before that uh, at the Broncos, all of our skill stuff, both our defence and our attack, is done under fatigue. Uh, when we do contact, it's, it's game contact. You know, on Friday we did a pose, basically our session ran uh, you know, a five minute warm up, five minute of contact, and that was body on body, no suits, no pads or anything like that, but just some one on one contact and some two on one contact. Then they went into about 10 minutes of conditioning. Then we did a, uh, a defensive full contact drill for 10 minutes, back into conditioning, back into a defensive, uh, like a left on right full contact defensive drill uh, with a focus on defence. So we, we have a focus on either your attack or defence, uh, which, which is something that's, that's new to me. Um, I always sort of thought if we were doing left on right, uh, the attack, you try and get them doing what you want to do and you, you try and get your defence as well. Uh, the Broncos, we have a, a focus on one, so you don't care too much about the attack and what they throw up. Your focus is on your defence. As I said, it's full contact. Uh, then we went back into conditioning, then finished the session with uh, about 15 minutes of a game, just getting stuck into each other. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, it's very full on contact. They get stuck into it. It's uh, probably not quite game, but it'd be somewhere around the 90 to 95%. Um, and again, that goes back to what I said before, trying to teach that defensive attitude of, when we're defending, we're going for the kill. We're getting stuck into the opposition. We're, uh, we're, we're trying to give them as little opportunity uh, as we can, regardless of whether it's practice or, uh, 
or, uh, or an actual game so that we, we carry that mindset into a game. And that's it with, uh, with, with the, the slideshows. Anyone, uh, we're we'll going to some vision next, but has anyone got any questions or anything? You know, Peter Ryan is, is all about, uh, and I don't disagree with this at all either, he, he's all about you know, getting your